I know this isn't a penitential service, but perhaps I should begin by making a confession. I thought I was speaking here tomorrow evening. And the second thing I thought was that I was speaking at 8 p.m. So I learned at the end of the afternoon by chance because someone visited the monastery and said they heard that I was speaking in Oma this evening. So I learned that I would have to read my emails more attentively. And here I am, and I've been warmly welcomed because arriving for 8 p.m. in the sacristy about 20 minutes early, Father McDevitt really showed me a great sign of hospitality. I think he was panicking that I wasn't going to turn up, so I was made to feel very welcome. Last evening, you reflected around the theme, God speaks to us, God's presence in his word. Following on from that, I have been asked to share with you this evening around the theme, we listen to God, we are attentive to God's presence in our listening. We listen to God, we are attentive to God's presence in our listening. Our title consists of two affirmations. But I think the first thing I would like to say is that what we should do this evening is ask ourselves the question, are those affirmations really true for me? Do I listen to God? Am I attentive to God's presence in my listening? The truthful answer is more likely to be that we try to listen to God in our lives without always succeeding, and that we strive to be attentive to God's presence in our listening, but sometimes we fail and fall down on this score. Like Martha in the gospel passage read for us, we are all inclined at times to become distracted. We become distracted in so many ways. We get caught up by all sorts of things, good things included, acts of service and the like. And as a result, we can miss out on God's presence in our lives, even when we're busy, as we would say, serving him. While we long to be with God, and to recognize that he is with us at all times, often our presence to God and our awareness of his presence to us is somewhat deficient. The overall context in which we meet a series of talks on the importance of the liturgy of the word in our Eucharistic celebrations brings back to mind for me one Sunday afternoon in Advent a few years ago. I'd been asked to meet with a group of parish readers who came to the monastery for a time of reflection on the role they played in their parish community as servants of the word. And I'd been asked to introduce this group of about 30 people to the monastic practice of Lexio Divina careful reading of the scriptures. Would you believe me if I told you that when I asked the group in the opening minutes of our meeting, if any of them could share with the others what he or she had retained from that particular Sunday's scripture readings, the particular word that had spoken to them personally, the particular thoughts and call that had struck them, only two people out of the whole group, two young men, incidentally, could remember and share with the others what they had heard and retained as a word from God for them. 
The other said, quite frankly, that nothing had remained with them for the rest of the day. Nothing had retained their attention. Two remarks. The first thing I would say is that this group was a particularly honest bunch. They admitted that most of them couldn't even remember what the readings were that morning, including those who had read that Sunday. They owned up and said that they all needed their memories to be jogged by the other members of the group and by a little prompting from me. The second thing I would say is that it is interesting to note how the two young men in the group had retained a word of God as a call addressed to them from that Sunday's liturgy. They were both struck by the fact that their children had come back into the congregation from the children's paraliturgy carrying placards aloft on which were written the gospel words, stay awake. This was the message both young fathers retained as a word spoken by God to them. A word that had come to them through the mediation of their children. And that's surely interesting from an evangelization perspective. These men, children, were their evangelizers. And they heard that call as they went on to explain as a call to be attentive to God's presence in their family lives. In the light of what I've just shared with you, let's return to the affirmations in the reflection theme for this evening's sharing. We listen to God. Really? Clearly, this is not always the case for everyone, even parish readers who proclaim the word. We are attentive to God's presence in our listening. I'm not so sure that we are just as attentive to God's presence as we could and should be. So much for this group of parish readers I had to deal with that Sunday afternoon some years ago. Let me now propose a little litmus test to examine where we stand here in Oma tonight on the idea of God's presence to us in his word proclaimed at the sacred liturgy. If we were to be asked when does the Lord become present in the celebration of the Eucharist? When would we say that happens? I suspect that many who are gathered here would say, at the consecration, of course. Now that's surely revealing. Does it not suggest that for many people, including some who are here, the liturgy of the word is a kind of preliminary to what the Eucharist is really about. You see, I am not so sure that we well and truly think of the real presence of the Lord in his word as much as we do in the sacramental signs of the consecrated bread and wine. That is so sad. It is a real impoverishment of our understanding of what celebrating the Eucharist is all about and what it should do for us. There are several texts from the early fathers of the church which speak of how scandalous it is when we allow God's word to fall to the ground as it were because we haven't listened to it proclaimed in the readings. And they would say, 
that we would be more attentive in regard to the bread and the wine consecrated than in regard to that word, that we should be just as attentive to the word. The four Eucharistic prayers proposed for special occasions capture things well when they have us pray, you are truly blessed God of holiness. You accompany us with love as we journey through life. Blessed too is your son, Jesus Christ, who is present among us and whose love gathers us together. As once he did for his disciples, Christ now opens the scriptures for us and breaks the bread. In these Eucharistic prayers, it is acknowledged that Jesus is already really present to the congregation in the opening of the sacred scriptures, as really present there as he is when the bread and wine are consecrated. The risen Jesus is as present to us at the liturgy of the word as when he walked the Emmaus Road with those two disciples on the first Easter evening. Those two disciples whom he led to recognize him at the breaking of bread. Those two disciples whom he led to recognize that it was him who had been with them on the road, making their hearts burn within them as he opened the scriptures for them. We listen to God. We are attentive to God's presence in our listening. It would be more honest to say that we should listen to God and that we should be attentive to God's presence in our listening. There is no doubt that we could all listen more by which I mean we could listen better to God's word in the liturgy, including those of us who get up to proclaim the word for others as readers, and also those of us who, like myself, preach God's word to the people of God day in and day out. If I'm honest, I would have to say I'm afraid that we are not always as tuned into God as we should be. I'm afraid that we are not always as attentive to his presence in our listening as we could be. The call to listen runs right through the Bible from beginning to end. The word listen prefixes the promulgation of the law, the revelation of God's will for his people. Standing on Mount Sinai, Moses begins by saying, listen, Israel. The Shema Israel is the prayer that the pious Jew in Jesus' time and still in our own day is given to recite three times daily to keep him alert and attentive, ever established in a listening attitude of heart. The theme of listening is dominant in the gospel presentation of Jesus' coming into the world and throughout his earthly ministry. At the Annunciation, Mary is told to listen. You will conceive a child. St. Bernard would say 